Do you know who's behind your email? What do they fund? Are they building a culture you want to be a part of? This Advent, break up with big tech and reboot your email with FIDE. Look us up, F-I-D-E-I. And there's a link in the description box below. That's FIDE, how Catholics send email. A few days ago, I brought to you the story of an Italian priest, Father Ramon Giudetti, who excommunicated himself, so we were told, for daring to suggest that Francis wasn't Pope. Well, he didn't exactly suggest it. He said flat out, Francis is an anti-Pope usurper. The media reports didn't give us the substance of what he said, didn't give us great detail. It just said that Benedict was the true Pope and that Francis was an anti-Pope. That's all they really told us. The reporting on it was small, based entirely pretty much on the reports from the actual diocese in question. My own live stream on it cited predominantly the press releases from the, from the Italian bishops who made the announcement, which were then reported by the German bishops on their official news site. A viewer of mine who is fluent in Italian transcribed the substance of his actual sermon. So I have for you now here the homily he gave that got him excommunicated in full. Brief commentary on it afterwards. Let me know what you think about this homily. The 31st of December, 2022, a year ago, the Holy Father Benedict XVI leaves this world, this earth. He leaves it as Pope, Vicar of Christ. Benedict XVI never ceded that famous Petrine Munis. He knew what would happen, but he never wanted to renounce it. But this was the only way to save the church. And he continued to wear white, wear the papal ring, give apostolic blessings that only the reigning pope can do. And thus he stayed in the investiture or enclosure of St. Peter. And Peter does not run from the battle. And Peter did not run. As St. Paul prophesied in the second letter to the Thessalonians, verse 2, which refers to Benedict, quote, He is the one who restrains the lawless one, the iniquity. Now that iniquity had to be given a bit of time to manifest itself, it tried to disguise itself, hiding in the shadows, making small steps. It wants to go against God. But it didn't cover all the bases, because Benedict XVI, guided by the Holy Spirit, understood what would happen, and thus did not consign to the iniquity the munis. And so he left the world, with everything that pertains to a pope. Thanks to him, the church can survive, even if this is still not understood by many because he passed the keys to the true high pontiff. But that Benedict XVI had not renounced the munis was only understood after a few years, because there were some men, and then some priests, and then a journalist. These men, champions of the gospel, children of God, made it known. The first was Father Alessandro Maria Minutella. He was contested and paid the price, and is paying the price for some time now, for his love of Christ and the church. Then after him, six other priests, Father Bernasconi, Father Celestino, Father Robert, Father Gebhardt, Father Johannes, Father Pavel. The Magnificent Seven is in the famous movie of a few years back. Story of seven men armed with implements who chose to defend a village of farmers by taking on an army of their criminal usurpers. So now we have seven new cavaliers, each with his own story, each with his own calling, his own priestly vocation, that they must live out in faith to his own martyrdom. And martyrdom it is. An avalanche of penalties rained down on their heads. Excommunications. Suspension on divinus. Cancel here. Cancel there. Unprecedented. But all this is necessary for the salvation of the church. Priests in the end are not supermen, but are men. Each with weaknesses, fears, sins. But they are invested with a divine quality and have a mission to be greater than us. And because of this, they trust in Jesus and consecrate themselves to Mary. They were considered crazy or fools, fools for Christ, but with word and countenance, they persuade you to look toward heaven. Well, the stare of Signor Bergoglio and his mercenaries is not toward heaven. They are negators of heaven. At best, they look horizontally, catatonic, a look towards nothing. And thus we have these seven, and maybe someone else around the world, who look toward heaven, and to keep alive that of faith, and as St. Paul says, toward our country. We are called to be citizens of that country, we must wait in faith, without fear, in hope, in strength. We must pass through this tribulation and get purified, to demonstrate our faith, to remain standing to the throne of the Lamb, 
regal, the throne of the just one, the celestial Jerusalem. We are not made for this world. We are not the children of this history. We are made for heaven, and our faith is testimony to the Lamb. And so what have these priests done? They have given all, risked all, renounced all, renounced security, all for Jesus and souls. These are true pastors, not those who stay in sacristies and live in comfort, get their pay, and say, let's wait for the bishops to say something. Yes, those who live in more comfort and who in turn say, let's wait for the cardinals, let them say something, and so they wash their hands. Do they forget 2,000 years of history? 2,000 years of saints and martyrs who give testimony and example. St. Stephen, for instance, what do these bishops, priests, cardinals believe? Do they believe in the salvation of souls, the church, the love of Jesus? They sit around and they twiddle their thumbs. They know everything. It's not like they don't know. They pretend not to know that there has been a schism for 11 years inside, that it, there is stonecutters in charge, governing, that they know this one is not the Pope. They know it, but stay silent. Then brings some forth a dubia that ends in a fizzle. Let's not forget some signs, a lightning bolt striking the Basilica of St. Peter. Then this December 17th, a lightning bolt hits the statue of St. Peter in Buenos Aires, knocking off halo and keys. Who has eyes to see, who has ears to hear, hears. Remember the Lord says, I will not leave you alone. I send the Spirit. And then I will be with you till the end of time. As said in the Apocalypse, with one breath the Lord will destroy the Antichrist and all associated with him. Those with the mark of Satan, small remnant conversely, has the seal of salvation. The church we belong to is the church of always. Maybe it is now catacomal as it was in the beginning gatherings in homes, etc. But the church must be pure. It is no longer time to stay in the sacristies. It is time to fight. A fight that we already know we will be the winners, as St. Paul says. They don't scare us, these big powers, these faces of devils. They don't scare us, this stone cuttery. They are already condemned. The victory is ours in Christ. We are with Christ. Cost what it costs, we remain with Christ. I wish that other priests will come out in the open. They that can renounce all except the truth. Even if we are a minority, that is what, what is important is fidelity to Christ, that we remain faithful to our sound doctrine. We know that they have desecrated St. Peter's Basilica, St. John Lateran, these destroyers of the sacred. The small remnant resists all of this. The church is not made of stone, but of heart, of soul, of spirit. The church is made of living people. Let us wait in faith, knowing that we are the winners. So by way of brief correction here, there I misreported or suggested in er errantly, basically, that he would likely align himself with Archbishop Vigano after all of this because Vigano has got his Exerge Domine Association for priests who had been canceled but who were dedicated to restoring tradition. I was in, I was that was a guess on my part. It was wrong because the priest has already aligned himself with another priest associated with resisting francis that would be father don or that'd be right that's don minutella who is a notorious priest internationally and i say notorious not in a bad way but he has long been resisting francis and is i believe associated with the benedict was the true pope and francis is an anti-pope position in the general resistance of francis although there are also several theses about why people don't believe that Francis is truly Pope. I'm not sure which one Father uh, Minutella actually holds to himself. If you know, let me know in the comments what his position is. Don't post links in the comments. They won't work. I have to remind people of that. But I'm curious what you thought about this homily of his. Do you think that the that this warranted his excommunication? Is this Was this homily a warning to all other priests out there? I personally know a couple of priests who are of this kind, who believe generally that Benedict XVI did not truly resign the papacy. That France, or whether it was authentically or not, I, I won't say simply because I don't want to release their identities by accident, but I know priests who have actually said flat out they don't believe that Francis has ever been Pope, that he was an anti-Pope, and that Benedict never truly resigned, either correctly or he incorrectly did, or some other reasons. But I'm very curious what you have to say about this homily. Uh, what it re regardless of whether you agree with the substance of the homily, it does take a lot of courage to stand up knowing that you are in a diocese that is overseen 
by Francis, after all, as the, at least on paper, Bishop of Rome and Pope, he has the authority over every single diocese in Italy. And I don't mean that in simply because he's Pope, but because the if you are accepted as Pope, then in Italy you are like the head of the bishops' conferences there, de facto. You run the church there completely and have direct authority over all the bishops there. I, I do wonder, because the decree of his excommunication was issued the next day. He gave the homily on the 31st and was excommunicated formally the next day. One wonders how that happened so quickly. It's almost as if he was being watched or if there was somebody in his, a diocesan observer in the pews that day sitting there watching and then who reported it to the bishop. One wonders. Let me know what you thought of all this in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to sharing this on social media, that helps a lot too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.